What's going on guys, Billy here, and yesterday I was in Soho, Manhattan at the Standard Hotel for the release of the Parrot and Nafi. This is Parrot's first try in the folding drone space and seems to be a direct competitor to the DJI Mavic Air as it is priced at $699, so $100 less than the Mavic Air. Now you'll have to bear with me as I didn't get as much footage as I would have liked to while I was there at the event. It was a pretty tight space and there's also a bunch of people sort of bumping into each other, but I do have a lot of things that I want to discuss. So let's start off with the design, which almost looks like a bug because of the way that the legs come off of the body and also how the camera is positioned up front. Anyway, the battery goes on top of the drone towards the back, which houses the power button just there in the middle. These batteries charge via a USB-C port just on the back rather than a proprietary port. Bless up for that. On the underside of the drone is the one and only LED on the entire body, a small fan to cool the drone off during flight, and a pair of sensors to help hold the craft stable in high winds. Finally, on the front is the camera held by a 3-axis gimbal, which we will touch on a little bit more later once we discuss the specs. Overall, I'm a big fan of the design. Like I said, it sort of looks like a bug, and they certainly did not want us to forget that during the presentation as they showed us how the Anafi was designed to resemble a bee. Folded up, the drone is very portable, even though it doesn't come with a gimbal guard on the front. The legs sort of protect the camera and gimbal towards the front, which is a nice touch. Speaking of unfolding, this thing is so easy to unfold. For some reason, it's weird unfolding the Mavic Air or the Mavic Pro just because the legs open in different directions and one set needs to be open before the other, but I do have to say that unfolding the Anafi is as painless as it can get. It gets even easier to fold it back up once you're done. Something that you may have noticed when looking at the front view of the drone is that there is no obstacle avoidance sensors on this drone except for the one on the bottom of the drone to see when it gets close to the ground. I'm not one to rely on the obstacle wind sensors on any of my drones, nor do I think anybody should rely on them, but they are nice to have there for certain situations, like maybe I'm flying a little bit further than I should be, and I don't see a tree in front of me, maybe my depth perception is off. Therefore, obstacle wind sensors could be handy, again, just in case. Now, sometimes I fly with no sensors, and the Anafi or the Anafi not having sensors really isn't a deal breaker to me, but I think that Parrot should have sat down and looked at the market that they're targeting. With this drone, it's obviously not going to be professional who fly drones daily or at least, you know, weekly. This is going to be for some people who just like to go outside, take some pictures, maybe put up the drone every once in a while, and people who might be a little bit careless with their drone again because these aren't going to be professionals. Those are the people that I think need the obstacle avoidance sensors, and for this drone to not have any, I think it's a mistake. Now, when I was posting pictures to Twitter of the Anafi during the event, I got some feedback of people saying that the drone looked weak, it looked flimsy, and that it might break. Now, I thought the same thing at first when I was seeing some pictures. The legs seemed very, very small, very brittle, but once I got it in my hands, I could tell it was very well made. Also, quick story, I was there at the event, I had my back turned in the situation, so I really don't know what happened, but... One of the drones hit the glass of a window really hard. I turned around, it fell from about 15 feet down, hit the ground, there was a very loud cracking noise, and it was fine. They picked it up and they kept flying it for the entire event. There will always be certain situations out there where you hit something that you shouldn't have hit going a little bit too fast and your drone may break. So as far as crashes are concerned, it really does depend on the circumstances, but during regular use, I think that this drone is going to hold up just fine. Okay, so that's the design. Now let's talk about specs. First up, performance. This drone can fly at a maximum speed of 33 miles per hour when it's in its sport mode, and it can also withstand gusts of wind up to 31 miles per hour, which is pretty impressive for this small craft. The Anafi also has a maximum flight time of 25 minutes with its battery that can hold 2,700 milliamp hours. They had a few of the Anafis flying around and I got to capture some of the flight, but it wasn't enough to get a feel for the true performance of this drone. They also let me hold the controller and move the drone around a bit, which was cool, but I really can't say anything about how it flies until I get it outside and push it to its limits. The range of the drone is nothing that we haven't seen before. The signal is transmitted over Wi-Fi at 2.4 or 5.8 gigahertz and also has a maximum range of 2.5 miles. You probably won't be getting that full 2.5 miles from the drone, but we're going to have to wait to see how well it performs once we actually fly it. Something else that Parrot boasted was their smart band management and omnidirectional transmission system, which they claim is going to make the Wi-Fi signal more reliable. From previous drones that I've flown, I can tell you that Wi-Fi transmission systems really aren't the best. 
As for the camera specs, this is where things are all over the place. A Sony IMX230 sensor is inside that is capable of taking 21 megapixel still photos, but can only shoot in 4K or cinema 4K at 30 frames per second. And even worse, the maximum frame rate when shooting at 1080p is 60, not 120. While the camera is able to shoot HDR video at that 4K resolution, being able to pack higher frame rates into this camera should have been something that paired prioritized. Also, just a side note, the max bit rate for video on this drone and with this camera is going to be 100 megabits per second. Now here's some sample video provided by Parrot themselves which I'm sure has been touched up a little bit in post-production and until I can shoot some video for myself I do have to give it the benefit of the doubt and say it looks really really good for the size. Something that is very unique to the Anafi's camera is the ability to digitally zoom up to three times. Now there will be a slight loss in quality if you zoom in to the maximum three times but there are ways around that so with 4 4K when you're shooting in a 4K resolution, you're going to be able to zoom in 1.4 times with lossless quality. If you're going to be shooting in 1080p, you can zoom in 2.8 times with lossless quality. This is an awesome feature to have inside of a drone because if you're trying to film something and you can't get too close to it, you can just zoom in. This feature is on the Mavic Pro and I believe just the Phantom 4 standard, but no other DJI drone and it works awesome. Moving on a little bit here, the gimbal is where things get interesting. The camera is held by a three axis gimbal but only two of the axes are mechanical while the third is digital. This is basically like the spark how it is stabilized when the drone moves forwards and backwards, side to side, but not when rotating. From the test footage shot, it seemed to do the trick as it is as stable as can be. Now this gimbal has a trick up its sleeve. Because of the design, the camera can rotate an extra 90 degrees to look straight upwards, giving you a full 180 degrees of motion. This is something that I haven't seen in a drone except for the Matrice 200, which actually lets you mount a gimbal to the top of the drone and costs several thousands of dollars. Here's some example footage provided by Parrot and I have to say this opens up a whole new set of opportunities for shooting and I'm really excited to see what I can do with it. Also just a side note for those wondering because of how small the propellers are there is no chance of them getting in the frame which is just great attention to detail by Parrot. Props ruining the shot has always been a problem. Also if you look at the sides there's thin plastic pieces that protect the camera and gimbal assembly. This will add good protection to one of the most fragile pieces in the event of a crash. Now I want to move sort of away from the drone and take a look at the controller and flight application which work really well together. On the front are the two joysticks, on the back is a gimbal slider and a zoom slider, a reset button which brings the zoom to one times so if you're zoomed in and also the gimbal back to center in case you're pitched up or down, and finally a shutter button. In the center are two ports, one USB for plugging in your smartphone that you use to fly, and one USB-C for charging, so you can actually charge and fly at the same time. Something that you may notice is the lack of a power button. That is because when you open the remote, it turns on automatically, which is a great feature. Now, the power button is not the only button missing. In fact, there's a lack of physical buttons across the board. That is because they designed the app with all the controls at the bottom of the screen, so you can just reach up with your thumbs, which I really like. The app overall is really clean, responsive, but I really wasn't able to get a good look at it or a good feel for it and it's also in French so we're gonna have to do some digging once we actually get the drone in hand. Also, really quickly, that big fat thing at the top, just above the phone, that's actually the transmitter, so that is what sends the information to the drone. I guess the final thing that we had to do to talk about in this video for the Anafi are the flight modes, and it does a lot of the other things that other drones do, like Droney, I believe they have a Droney type uh, flight mode. They also have Orbit, they've got Follow Me, all that good stuff, but there's two that stand out to me. First is Dolly Zoom, so using that built-in zoom in combination with the drone flying backwards, it creates this vertigo effect that looks incredible. Usually you'd have to do this in post and you still can if you want to, but now you can do it with a flight mode right there, it does it for you and it looks awesome. The second flight mode is 3D mapping which produced this rendering of this house which is just incredible. I really can't wait to try that out and also kind of see how you stitch the photos afterwards. I know this can kind of be a pain, I know you can use drone deploy, but we're gonna have to see how all this works once we get the drone. <sighs> That was definitely a lot more than I wanted to say. I wanted to try to keep this video as short as possible, but guys, in all seriousness, I am pumped for the Anafi. I'm so happy that someone else other than DJI is coming to the table with a drone that I think is gonna do very well. I did a stream, a live stream, probably a couple of weeks ago, maybe even a month ago at this point in time, and I said that there's a dark horse of the drone industry and it was Parrot. This is when I first saw the It's Coming page. It was a small teaser. 
And here we are guys now, Parrot has delivered and this drone looks awesome. One of the things I'm very excited about is the camera. It looks great from the footage that I've seen. It's the most important thing to me about a drone is the camera. It can shoot very good footage, but I'm so disappointed that it can't shoot at those higher frame rates. 4K 60 uh, and also 1080p 120. It just adds another dynamic to shooting video that you're not gonna see with the Parrot Anafi. Also guys, this thing is light. It comes in at 320 grams, the Mavic Air is 430 grams, and the Spark is 190. So it comes right in between, almost directly in between the Mavic Air and the Spark. That's something big they tried to harp on in the uh, presentation, just because it's so light and so easy to set up. Uh, but guys, if you're interested in this drone, pre-orders have started. I'll throw a link in the description. Also, it's going to be shipping starting July 2nd, and it's going to be in stores July 1st. I said the price already, it's $699. I think that this is the best shot to try and take down the or at least compete with them because competition in a space is always something good for us as the consumers. But guys, hope you enjoyed the video and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.